All I hear is talking, I don't sweat that If they don't trust me either, I respect that If she be down the ride, oh I bet that Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is J.H. How y'all doing, Postal Family? Is everybody good? Is everybody cool? Everybody clean? Are you crisp? Are you feeling gyre? The air sucks. Let's talk. I made a video. I'm not sure what day this is that you're watching this because I sprinkle out my videos. But uh, video posted... Uh, last night I'm gonna assume this is posted on Friday and uh, while my video was being posted about the air quality uh, the National Association of Letter Carriers put out a statement as well as the APWU in regards to the breathing hazard that we have out in the air so here's the thing um, it never really dawned on me because this has been going on every year when it comes down to California and those wildfires and they had to deal with that. And this is not minimizing anything having to do with them. But uh, once it started hitting home to people I know, because I don't really have very many people on the West Coast, uh, this is when, you know, it kind of came to fruition. So this is what uh, the National Association of Letter Carriers says is urging USPS to protect carriers from hazardous air quality. Yeah. Use of face masks, filtering face pieces is recommended. I'm going to try to not just, I'm not even going to comment behind this. You guys, you guys do your thug dizzle, okay? Whew. City letter carriers in the Midwest, New England, and along the Eastern Seaboard are facing hazardous working conditions caused by smoke from hundreds of wildfires blazing across Central and Eastern Canada. The Air Quality Index, this is the most important part, a U.S. Environmental Protection Agency metric is fine. Particulate air pollution exceeded a staggering 400 at times in Syracuse, New York City, and Pennsylvania's Lehigh Valley today. The AQI is hovering around 300 in Washington, D.C. A level of 50 or under is considered good. Anything over 300 is considered hazardous. When even healthy people are advised to curtail outdoor physical activity, this poses a special problem for the NALC members who must work outside for extended periods each day. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Huh. Executive Vice President Paul Barner said that the National Association of Letter Carriers, business agents, and branch leaders are relentlessly advocating for the health and safety of our members as crisis unfolds. Ah, I, I want to say something so bad. Barner has been in steady contact with management at the Postal Service's Washington headquarters all week. Management has responded with local mandatory stand-up talks. Yeah, yeah, because people want to talk when they can't breathe. <clears throat> and will provide masks to carriers who request them. Leave is being granted on a case-by-case -case basis, but the National Association of Letter Carriers is urging that all employees with medical conditions that could be worsened by breathing in smoke be given leave automatically. Well, here's the thing. Anybody that breathes in smoke, it's, it's, it's hazardous. It's deadly. It's just my opinion. All right, face mask filtering face pieces provide varying levels of protection based on the type of proper usage. N95 mask filtering face pieces are authorized for use by postal employees. They were going to use them regardless. It's not like they're going to authorize them, really. Employees who have health concerns based on medical conditions are encouraged to immediately consult their physician. National Association of Letter Carriers will continue to advocate on behalf of its members and encouraging the USPS to provide appropriate protective face mask filtering face pieces. <laughs> National Association Director of Safety and Health, Manny such and such, urged all carriers to be vigilant about potential harmful health effects from working in these hazardous conditions. If you're feeling sick or having a hard time breathing, immediately seek Medical, atten medical attention before it's too late and then if possible call your supervisor to let you know what you're going through it's better be safe than sorry he says <sighs> so much to unpack there so much to unpack there but but 
APWU as well. They put out a statement. Fire is in your health. Smoke is made up of complex mixture of gases and fine particles produced when the wood and organic materials burn. The biggest health threat from smoke is fine particles. These microscopic particles can get in your eyes and respiratory system where they can cause health problems such as burning eyes, runny nose, and illness such as bronchitis. Fine particles can all, also aggravate chronic heart and lung disease. Yeah, this is all what we need to hear right now. Even the link to the premature deaths in people with these conditions. If you are healthy, you're usually not at major risk from short-term exposures to smoke. Mm. Still, it's a good idea to avoid breathing smoke in if you can help it. Everyone should take steps below when wildfires are present. Use common sense. Pay attention. First one says, if it looks smoky outside, it's probably not a good time to mow the lawn or go for a fun. Uh, you know, I, yeah, Jesus Christ. If you're advised to stay indoors, take steps to keep indoors and air as clean as possible. When smoke levels are high, try to avoid using anything that burns. If you have asthma or any other lung disease, make sure you follow your doctor's direction about taking your medications. Run your air condition if you have one. If you have one... Uh, Unexpected expenses stressing you out? Get the money you need now with Loans for Feds, a program designed specifically for federal employees. Bad credit is not a problem. Application is fast and easy with same-day approvals. Apply now. Well, at least they're acknowledging it. That doesn't mean that their statements are going to do anything. It says report to your manager. And what does your manager say? Has anybody reported to their manager yet? Leave your comment if you have. And what does your manager in turn say? Because at this point, I mean, have they, they said stand up talks? Really? How can you stand up and talk to carriers and say, hey, be careful. Go deliver the mail or just suspend I mean, common sense, the smoke goes away eventually. Suspend mail delivery temporarily until the levels that we are fate, not me, but my postal family, my UPS family, my any delivery family has to deal with when they're going outside. Suspend delivery. And if somebody is sitting home and they're wondering why, their little piece of mail that came from Albuquerque, New Mexico with a box of chili peppers didn't show up, they should realize that, yeah, somebody's life is worth more than, you know, uh, fulfilling whatever the obligations this company claims to have. I mean, the mail is slow already. Um, but yeah, let, let's let's do diligent people because this is the... the hmm. <laughs> I really want to comment so bad. Yeah, it's burning me. So, you know what? Instead, 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 I'll tell you guys about this email that I got. This, this is a good one. This is a good one. All right. Because that, that's rough. That's rough. So my eyes opened up. That means it's rough. I got an email from my UPS brother. <laughs> Not even related to me. But we are brothers. That's how it works. And that's how he titled it. Hey brother, I've been watching your videos on YouTube for a bit now. I'm a UPS driver gearing up for the upcoming strike. I'm a local in Arizona. Says, thought you might want to join us on Saturday, June 10th. So Saturday, June 10th, they're going to be doing their voting is up apparently. It says contract campaign webinar UPS what does it say? UPS, oh man, UPS strike vote and beyond. Join the UPS Teamster from across the country to make plans for turning out an overwhelming yes vote to authorize a strike at UPS. Learn about upcoming contract campaign actions to continue to make UPS feel the heat and prepare UPS Teamsters to take strike action on August 1st. Woo! Get the latest contract campaign material so you can take action where you work. They have a Zoom meeting going on on Saturday. And you know what? Jay, probably, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. You know why? Because we stand in solidarity with anybody that has to encounter the same things that we encounter. And here's a good thing. I mean, if you hear that they are going to strike, this is, this is just a personal thing. 
This has nothing to do about facts. But if you hear that they are going to strike, I implore anybody, anybody that can hear my voice, go join them. Go out there, represent who we are, and stand with them and say, you know what? I agree. I agree with you. Because what's stronger than 350,000 UPS workers striking? A few of us going out there to stand and watch and say, yo, they right. Now, we can't strike. I had to make sure that that's put in there. All right. We cannot strike. But you can stand in unison, unified, with people that are fighting for their good. Their cause is good. And if you happen to see the news one day and you see a bunch of browns, and a few blues sprinkle in there, what kind of impact would that have on their bosses? Man, the people really want this. The workers really want this because at the end of the day, this is for the workers. It's not about the million dollar, billion dollar company owners. This is about the workers. Everybody should have fair working conditions. This is my opinion. I don't usually drop it in too much, but if you could, why not see what it's like see what it's like now i have a younger audience um so it may be different it may be something that you're uh, completely foreign to or foreign to you but at least if you show up and say man this is interesting and talk to one of them i encounter ups guys every single day people at the stations encounter ups people every single day and they're usually to their self. They don't speak much, but I talk to them. Hey, man, what's going on? One of my guys I used to work with way back in the days when I used to move furniture, he works for UPS. He gives me a lot of information about what they do. And it's interesting to see how their dynamic is almost identical to our dynamic, minus the fact that they can actually strike to get what they deserve. Whereas we have to pray that our union does right and fight for what we deserve. You know, I would implore any union stewards, if you have, you know, the cojones, go and watch what they're doing. Get some details behind it. See if you can figure out a way to demand the same things that they're requesting for us without having to strike. Get the ideas. Don't be tunnel vision be broad see the big picture does that make any sense to anybody or am i just babbling at the mouth somebody goes, you just talking shut the mouth probably probably but again this is my opinion we're all entitled to it but again the visual on the news can you fathom that when somebody's reporting and we're out here in such and such Oklahoma and uh, we have all the UPS guys out here and look, there's a couple of uh, the USPS guys sprinkled in there. You guys ain't going to get in trouble. Don't worry about it. As long as you're not on the clock, <laughs> don't, you know, don't do nothing while you're on the clock. This is amazing. All these guys are standing in solidarity. Do you hear that, Mr. CEO? They're all, st they're all together. Then what? Then what? Because, you know, at the end of the day, what they don't do, we're going to end up having to do. Don't take work away from them. We don't want nobody taking work away from us. And here's a little backstory. When I first moved to my state of uh, residency, you know, I used to work for a moving company. The moving company had a contract with UPS during the holiday season. So about the week before, actually the week of... Uh, the, what was it Thanksgiving week? Yeah, until the first week of January, they would hire our contractors to haul their trailers from point A to point B. So after I was done for my day, I would go and we would get paid at their rates. It was amazing. It was extra money. It was great. So I would work all day moving furniture and then get in the track. I drive over to the UPS place, um, get in a tractor that we leased, we go over to the UPS place, be assigned a trailer, and I used to pull double trailers, so we would hook up, to, I'd hook up to doubles and then go shoot up and drop them off and then pick up some more and come back down. And you know, they, they I don't know how they felt about it, but we were there, we were there to help. Um, and that, that kind of, you know, now looking at it from this end, 
we they were giving away work. We probably I was probably one of the problems that they were talking about contracting out their work. Yeah, yeah. So I was one of those problems. You know, I did that for about four seasons, but you know, it was just the extra money. But it's interesting because you know I learned a lot from them. I used to go sit in their break rooms. They used to all turn their head like, "What the f- you doing in our place, man?" You know. Anyway, I'm just babbling. But um, yeah, I got a little experience dealing with life. Nonetheless, uh, I like the fact that the UPS guys are reaching out to me because that's not the first, and I felt like I should share it today. Um, obviously, I'm protecting their privacy as well. So, you know, the wildfires it comes down to our union. I appreciate you stepped up and started speaking about it. Uh, somebody's going to say it's not enough, but a it's a start. Um, this by the time this subsides, hopefully they have some type of something in place, protocol in place. For scenarios like this, because this happens every year over in California and it's not fair for them. And it's definitely not fair for anybody, any carrier, really. It's the hardest job. You sweat and you damn it. It's just not not a, not a good thing. All right. This is JH for Babble Long Enough. Postal family, y'all have a blessed rest of your day and we out.